Hi and welcome back to my channel and in this video we're going to be looking at how you can use AI that is chat GPT to help your community interest company. So I'm going to be running through what it is, how I've started to use it in my CICs, how I'm using it to help me get grant funding, to write application forms, to come up with ideas, to manage my business and to grow my community interest company. So it's really exciting stuff. This is new technology and a lot of you will be aware of it and others won't be. So I'm gonna to try to cover everything in this video. Before I jump into that, please hit the subscribe button for everything to do with community interest companies, grant funding, social enterprises, and all of that. And if you want to help get help starting a community interest company, jump over to my website where I've got my course, how to start a CIC and get grant funded in four months. I've also got a membership over there, which I'm gonna be added to and building over the rest of this year. So let's get into it. So I've known about AI for a little while now, of course, like all of us, you know, I'm just, um, you know, catching up and I'm just learning myself. So I've become aware that it has lots of benefits. So I've gone ahead and I have downloaded on my phone, and you can also use it on your desktop, ChatGPT. So what can this do? It is basically kind of like a search engine, but way better than Google, okay? So what can you do and how can it benefit your CIC? So my first point of call was to have a go over the last few days of getting it to help me write application forms. So part of running a CIC, and especially myself as a CIC coach, means I write lots of application forms and I help people with their application forms for grant funding, for like the National Lottery, Awards for All, and all the others. Now, I'm sure most of you can relate to this, writing application forms is really hard, it's really time consuming, they ask lots of different questions, lots of big boxes that you've got to fill out all that text for. And yeah, it's just difficult. It's difficult to get it right. It's difficult to get it over the line. If you're someone that's not experienced in grant writing, it's particularly hard. Um, and a lot of you who are starting out, you know, just haven't come from that background of writing applications. On top of that, some of you may have access issues. You may have like dyslexia or other issues maybe mean that you find it difficult to write application forms or maybe you're not just not from an academic background maybe you've you know worked in uh, different careers so you've not been somebody who's done a lot of writing before and then that can be a real like almost class barrier for people who um, haven't got that background writing these applications so enter chat gpt so i started using it to see if you could come up with ideas and help you write the application so the first thing i did is i went on it and i just asked it um can you come up with a arts council grant fund project for say twenty thousand pounds for me to run a project with this type of art um on this type of theme and then i said a bit about like me as an artist um you know but you know, lead artist will have this amount of experience. Anyway, put it all in and, and then it just immediately just bumps out all of this stuff. So it what I found was it was fantastic for coming up with names of projects. Like it came up with really cool names, like better than, I'm not very good at choosing my names for my projects. Like I'm not very imaginative. And it came up with some really good names. So that was the first thing I noticed that I loved. I then noticed that it actually hits the objectives and it knows what the uh, like the arts councils and the lotteries and stuff are looking for. So it knows them. It's probably already got in the system, you know, on the internet, of course, um, like examples of successful forms. So like it knows like what their criteria is. It knows what they are prioritizing and all of that sort of stuff. So. Um, bear in mind though, it might not be fully up to date. So uh, it often goes up to, at the moment, the current update, um, only goes up to 2021. So the last few years, if there's been an update or any priorities have changed, it wouldn't know that. However, you can, when you ask it something, copy and paste the priorities from the grant funders website into the question so it then knows okay those are the priorities so then it has that up to date information so then it can give you a better project focused on those priorities so what you ask it is key the more detail you put in the better the output is going to be that's one thing i found 
So what did I think of the projects that it was coming up with? I thought it was spot on. Like I tested it and I put in projects that I've already run. Um, and you know what? It was coming up with like, for instance, Arts Council projects. It was coming up with like the standard things that I do. Like I'll run X amount of workshops. I'll end it with an exhibition. I might do a publication out of it. Like it was coming up with pretty much all the same things that I normally do when I do those grant funds. So I was really impressed. And it also came up with some extra stuff that I hadn't thought of. And I think this is one of the benefits is that it will help you and it will give you ideas. Now, some of the ideas I didn't like, of course, um, and it did go a little bit too much. Like you've got to remember when you do these grant funds projects that you keep them easy and simple. But one thing I noticed when you asked, um, when you asked chat GPT is that it was coming up with stuff there was a bit too extravagant, like it was putting in festivals and creating, you know, your own hub and stuff like that. And it's like, whoa, you know, I'm just running a little project. So you do still need to read through. You need to sift out the stuff that isn't realistic that you don't want to do. And you need to just select the things that are going to work for you and your project. So it definitely still requires some knowledge. Like you can't just like copy and paste, bang it in. Like it's still going to require some knowledge and it's going to require some input from you to tweak it up and sound a little bit more personal. So next I asked it to do me a budget. Now this was really interesting. So I typed in, you kind of need to give it a bit more information, like the kind of things like, you know, what your project's gonna be doing, what your outputs are. So then it knows what, you know, the kind of things you're gonna need to budget. Again, I thought it was quite interesting and pretty spot on. One thing I noticed is that it did pay staff really well. Um, I would like to, it to have paid a bit more, but yes, it did pay staff quite generously. One thing you can do is if you write in Arts Council guidance, pay guidance, again, it would then go and look at the Arts Council and write in the pay guidance. But again, bear in mind, it won't have the up-to-date knowledge of what the Arts Council pay guidance is because it recently changed and updated. So ChatGPT wouldn't know that. So again, you might want to go over to the Arts Council's you know, the Artist Union page, copy and paste the new guidance and pop that in. Or you might just want to put in, you know, pray project manager based on uh, £349 a day. So then it knows what the, the pay, what you charge. So then it's got that knowledge. So then when it does your budget, it'll factor it in. So I was pretty impressed with it. I did think that it overpaid um, advertising because it doesn't understand that Facebook ads are pretty cheap. So I felt like it overspent on that. So just be aware that it could be overspending on areas you don't need. It also didn't include everything, like it didn't have like materials and stuff. So again, when you write the question, if you write down like, I want materials for my workshops, you know, and stuff like that. But as a guide, it was good. And one thing I noticed is that it included evaluation. Now this is something that I haven't always been putting on my application forms before, but I can tell that grant funders are starting to want us to budget for an evaluation. So this means when your project is over, you might be taking, well, and while it's running, you would have been taking photos, you'd have been getting feedback forms, you'd have been collecting all that data, you'd have been producing a report at the end. So that is evaluation. So you do that work, but you may be paying for a tool as well to help you do that work, like a software or an app. So it has to factor that in now. So um, I was really impressed that it knew that, it knew to do that. Um, and one thing though it didn't know to do was like a contingency budget, it hadn't included that. So that's one thing. So I think as a guide, great, but I could see that people could rely on it too much and then not do what is a realistic budget and it doesn't have enough detail or breakdown on it. So you could end up having your application rejected because it doesn't have enough detail or it's missed stuff off. So I would only use it as a guide and that is my word of caution, just a guide. You're still gonna need to do some work. Now the other thing it can do is say you've written your application and you want to check it um, and you wanna you know, like know what your strengths and weaknesses of your application was. So you could actually copy and paste what you've written in and ask it, can you uh, tell me my strengths or my weaknesses? You're probably just gonna wanna know the weaknesses. So pick out the weaknesses. What do you think this might get rejected on? Um, and then it will tell you and it'll actually say, yeah, you're a bit weak on this or that. Um, so I thought that is really useful as well that you can actually kind of get that other eyes on it. It'll also check things like grammar and spelling. Um, so it's, again, a more advanced tool than like your regular spell, spell checks. Um, so that was great. 
It can also give you a list of partners in your area and it can also give you a list of grant funders. So I typed in like, give me a hundred um, you know, CIC grant funders in the UK and it gave me a list of a hundred grant funders and I checked it and loads of them are ones that I use. So everybody that I've used like um, Unlimited, Lottery, Heritage Lottery, Sports England, Arts Council, they're all on there and loads of other ones were on there and lots of ones that I didn't know were on there as well. Again, bear in mind that it doesn't have the most up-to-date knowledge, so a lot of those grant funders might not even be operating now. So, But it still, it gives you a good um, heads up and advanced knowledge of what like is out there and what has previously given grant funding to CICs. It can also do research for you as well. So say you wanna research a topic, research um, statistics. Again, you can pay for the more advanced one, so it gives you more up-to-date post 2021 um, data, but still um, a lot of the information will be roughly the same. And then aside from grant funding, um, just running your organization could be a lot easier with ChatGTP. So other examples I've got of things that you could do that would be useful is writing sections of your website, coming up with the actual layout of your website. So if you say, um, can you give me all the sections of my website that I would need for this community interest company on this theme? It would give you like what all the pages should be. And then like, you can ask it to then like do the blurbs for the pages. So that's really useful. It can also write letters for you, contracts, policies, lots of things like that. Again, you need to like be aware that it's only gonna have so much knowledge and you might have to add stuff but it still does a really good job and it can really help you with wording. And then let's talk about other things that you could just create using it. So I've started to use it to create things like blogs, social media ideas, content ideas. Um, it can also help you with like algorithms and all this sorts of stuff. So again, a lot of this is new technology. I'm only now just starting to get to grips with it myself. But one thing I did do this morning is I got it to write me an ebook. So I picked the topic, which was using community interest companies using AI, um, and it gave me a fantastic book breakdown of, um, of what a basics of a book would be. And then I was able to put in each chapter and then it would actually write the chapters for me. So in about half an hour, I basically built up like a 10,000 word uh, ebook, which is incredible that we could do something like that in such a short amount of time. Um, and it was good. It was really good stuff that it was it was giving out. It was really useful information. Now, I don't think it's going to replace the human knowledge and it's, you know, it's not going to replace, of course, human touch and human experience. For example, I wrote in, because as you know, I've already got a course, how to set up a CIC and get grant funded in four months. I've already done that course, had it run in for the year. So I asked it, to write me a course on that topic um, and to see how similar it would, it would, you know, to see what it came up with and how similar it was to what I've already produced. And it was pretty much dead on. I was quite impressed. It basically covered all the basics that my course already does, but what it lacked was I've added lots of examples and obviously things from my experience. So it lacks that personal edge of what my experience is, but it certainly got to grips with all like the legal stuff and all the basic framework of setting up a CIC. It just didn't have that personal experience with it. But it could drastically cut down how long it takes you to produce things, even if it doesn't have that personal edge. If you get it to do like all the basics and then you only have to add to it, that's gonna massively impact you and improve your productivity and cut down the time you spend using like like having to write stuff or having to come up with new ideas so overall it's definitely a thumbs up from me for chat gdp i think that it's an incredible tool i think that it is the future i think i'm pretty much going to be using it on almost a daily basis now in my business and even in your personal life you can get it to write you meal plans and recipes and um, you know, it's going to advance as well and you can get voice plugins. You'll be able to just chat to it, like, a, you know, all questions and stuff. It's just going to be amazing. It really is. Now, I'm not saying it's all going to be great because, of course, it can uh, pump out, like, nonsense. It can pump out disinformation. It can get things wrong. It's not a person. I can see lots of problems, lots of problems. And also, of course, 
it could also affect the job landscape going forward. But I think we should be early adopters. I think we should get into it early. I think we should educate ourselves. I think we should start getting to use it. And also we need to think about how our communities can benefit from it. So think about how your community that you're serving could benefit from AI and think, ask it. Say I'm running, say I'm running a, uh, a domestic abuse um, workshop. Um, how could AI help uh, women surviving domestic abuse? And it might give out a load of details of how AI could use, uh, be useful to that particular client group. And I'm sure it'll come up with loads of great ideas. I mean, certainly everything I've put in has come up with good ideas. It can actually um, help you with therapy. Um, it can do all kinds of things. It can point you towards different techniques of um, building resilience and coping strategies and um, just organizing your time, pointing you to different resources. So much, literally, there's so much that could be done. So I'm gonna leave you with that. I know it is absolutely mind blowing, um, but please go download it, have a little play around with it and see what you think uh, and get back to me with any questions or any, you know, what, what you found it to be useful for and if you want any more videos on AI.